with our fields coming up very soon, I wanted to make a new piece, a large segmented piece, based on the work of Malcolm Tibbetts. After making a very rough sketch, I started cutting pieces on the miter saw. Originally, I had intended to use all walnuts, and then my friend Larry Reeves offered me some poplar. The goal was to make a bunch of segmented rings, so I just started gluing up pieces. I glued them into half rings using dowels between the halves. And then I sand the faces parallel. Then I glue up the half rings. This is very tedious. There was a lot of monotonous work in this piece, mainly because I needed 84 segmented rings for this piece. I wanted to make three tortoises, and my next boondoggle was how am I going to cut these at an angle? So my solution was to glue them to a 2x4 and run them through my new bandsaw. Well, my new to me bandsaw. I was given this bandsaw by a fellow wood turner. It did not come with a rip fence, however, so I had to improvise one out of a 2x4 and some clamps. First I cut the waist off of one side. Then adjusted my fence to cut the actual size wedges I needed. Then I moved on to the poplar. Again, a lot of monotonous cutting and gluing. While the glue dried on those, I sanded the bases of my wedges and just started gluing them up in pairs, using rubber bands to clamp them. I would also need a few straight pieces for this sculpture. For the final two halves, I had to sand the faces so that they were parallel, and then glue them together. I made a simple cardboard template that will tell me the profile of my ring. My glue ups were not precise, so I had to flatten one side in order to put it on my cold jaws. Because the piece was so irregular, I needed to be very careful at first. I was just taking a hair off at a time. The center of my torus had to be just the right size in order to fit on the minimum size for the cold jaws, which was just about three and a half inches actually. The profile of my torus was about three inches. Once I had the outside done, I could finish the inside. Thanks to Unita for providing the abrasives that I used in this piece. Of 
course, once I had them all sanded and finished and all nice, I had to cut them in half. As you can see, I was not very precise with my profile. But that's okay, I'll smooth it out later. Again, the diameter of the cylinder had to be about 3 inches. Now I had to figure out how long these straight pieces had to be. The goal was to make shapes that kind of look like chain links. In order to straighten out my hand cut pieces, I jury rigged a little square on the sanding table there. I glued on the straight pieces. Once the glue dried, I was able to sand those faces flat and then glue in the second half of my torus. Again, once the glue dried, I was able to smooth out the joints with an angle grinder and my drill. Once I had my three links, I finished them with spray lacquer, sanding between coats to make sure they were nice and smooth. Now, in order to put this together, I needed to cut one of them in half. And now comes the final glue up. This fit was a little snug, a little more snug than I wanted, but I was able to get it together with a little bit of elbow grease. I used the glue sparingly because I didn't want any squeeze out because I couldn't really wipe it off. I gotta say I'm very pleased with how this piece turned out. It's based on the work of Malcolm Tibbetts he calls himself the Tahoe Turner, so check him out if you haven't seen his work. I'm a big fan. It's made of 936 pieces, if my math is correct, of walnut and poplar. Submissions for art fields just opened, so this is going to be my art fields entry this year. I wanted to make a new piece for art fields this year, something that may be a little bit more ambitious than I've done before. I think it turned out pretty darn cool if I do say so myself. So as usual, if you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in Kami's Garage.